Hello everybody. So I didn't expect to be making this video, but you guys voted for a part 3 to this series, so we are back. If you haven't seen my last two videos, I basically have created a clone of Geometry Dash. And in my last video, I finally made the AI to play it, which is just a simple neural network. It worked pretty well, but we only got it to beat the first level of Geometry Dash, Stereo Madness. But in today's video, we're going to be pushing the AI to its limits, by seeing what kind of levels it could play. Now logically, the next level to add would be back on track, as it is the next level in the game. But it has these jump pads that aren't currently in the clone. And going one level further into Polargeist, there are these orbs that you can jump on as well. So I have some features to implement if I want to make some of these levels, so I've decided I want to add three new things to the clone. The first two things are the jump pad and orbs I just showed you. And the third and final thing I want to add are these gravity inversion portals. These are found in levels like Dry Out and completely flip the direction of the physics, which is going to be fun to program. Anyways, I'm going to get to working, so let's roll a time lapse. Alright, so the new features have been implemented. There is just one big problem though. The neural network doesn't have enough information now to deal with the new obstacles. So let's fix it. Of the new obstacles, the jump pads don't cause an issue at all, as they can be interpreted as an obstacle, if they result in the player dying from hitting them. The orbs, however, are a different story. Since the orbs don't have solid collision, the player has no idea that the orb is even there. So I added a neuron to turn on if the player is intersecting with a jump orb, to hopefully get it to jump. Another issue right now with the AI is that sometimes the AI jumps too early or too late and hits an object that isn't directly in its path, but instead vertically. To fix this, I added a neuron that turns on if the player has a vertical obstacle that would be hit if it jumps. And the last neuron I decided to add was one that gives the network the height of the nearest obstacle when flying. This is to help reduce the chances that it starts flying too late and hits the wall by accident. With the neural network now updated, it's finally time to add some new levels, so let's roll another time lapse. That time lapse you just saw was much longer than you might imagine. Each level took about an hour to make, so it was definitely a grind. Anyways, we now have all of the Geometry Dash levels from back on track, through base after base. Now since Geometry Dash doesn't use an array system, unlike my clone, some of the tiles are slightly off, or are moved altogether. But I tried to keep the levels as true to the original as I possibly could, and I'm pretty happy with the results. So it's time to begin the training. Now before we start, I want to explain something real quick. The AI is learning to recognize obstacles and optimize the jumps. So if it is already trained, it can learn to adapt immediately once the map is changed. So to keep things interesting, the AI will be reset for every level to relearn each set of obstacles ahead of it. And for fun, the current best player of each generation is given a crown. So without further ado, let's see if the AI can learn to beat Geometry Dash. Let's go.
Yay! I'm finally done with this game! All jokes aside, I had a blast with this project, and I want to thank you guys for your support. If you guys would like to mess around with this by making your own levels, and having the AI play it, it will be on my GitHub in the description below. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye